We going live on them. We back in here. What is Area 51? What is Area 51? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about what is Area 51. Okay, I'm not saying no more. It's gonna be my main. Oh, Lord. And I'm out of brain, oh, fucking boy. Think about buying her a brain, oh, fucking boy. She wanna be my main. She just gets ignored. I'm talking, say my name in vain. I have money galore. I'm talking, say my name in vain. You gonna need a sword. There we go. All right, y'all. Coming on here talking about what it is, 51. I right, put that shirt on the shit, though. Hold on real quick. I'm going to put a shirt on the shit, too. We got some people. We got somebody up in here. We coming on talking about Air 51. Talking about what is Air 51 today. You feel me? Talking about what is Air 51. Talking about what they in here talking about. We coming on here talking about Air 51, everybody. Coming on here talking about Air 51. What is Air 51? What is Area 51? What is Area 51? Coming on here talking about Air 51 today. What is Area 51? What is Area 51? Fifty-one. We got people up in here. We got some people up in here looking. You feel me? What is Area Fifty-One? Talking about it. We talking about it today. Talking about it today. Who's up in here with us? Hey. Talking about it today. Who's up in here with us? Hey. Hold on, hold on. Oh on, y'all. Let me get everything straight. Let me get everything straight now. Hey. Hey, here we go. Hey. Okay, I'm gonna set up everybody coming on here. Talking about what is Air 51. For the road to Ganja up, you feel me? Shout out to Candace Mazer, the gas hen. Shout out to Candace Mazer. Oh, God. Oh, God, nigga, I love this teacher shit. I done fell in love with this teacher shit. Cause everybody can't do this shit. You feel me? Shout out to the Candace Mazer. We come from space. Give a fuck what nobody talking about. We come from Candace Mazer. The whole, the whole idea of California came from us, nigga. The whole idea of California came from us, nigga. Y'all nigga, these nigga model, these nigga, they model California 
after the cannabis major star system. And that's where cannabis comes from. And that's why we is even called cannabis. Because it comes from cannabis major, nigga. And it's like the it's like the California of the of the cosmos, nigga. It's like the California of the of the of the cosmos, nigga. Real shit, nigga. We out there bit chilling, getting high, relaxing, chilling on the beat type vibe, man. I know for a fact when this shit over with, I know I'm going out there. I'm gonna be like, nigga, I need a vacation. I'm gonna be like, nigga, I need a vacation. I, I'm, nigga, nigga, I need a vacation. <laughs> I'm gonna tell a lot, nigga, I need a vacation, nigga. Let me go out to Cannon Major. I need a vacation. I was just down on, I was just down on Planet Kai, nigga, or the, what they know is Earth. I was down here on Planet Kai, nigga, trying to take the land back here. I need a vacation. <laughs> oh, God. Oh God, in the road of Gonzo. What going on? What going on? What going on? We in here talking about Air 51. What going on? What going on? Peace to everybody. Peace to everybody that's in here. Peace to everybody that joined the live. Really appreciate it. We finna roll the gas up, and then after that, we finna get the get the teach. Gonna roll this ganja. Gonna roll this ganja. Who this is? What up? What going on? We got New Zealand. Niggas in here from New Zealand, man, whoa. Hey, what going on, fam? We got niggas in here from New Zealand, nigga, like, good. Hey, what going on, bro? I appreciate you tuning in. What going on? I appreciate you tuning in. You got people in here from all around the world, don't it? Everybody tuning in to the message. They gonna tell the world what's up with the Air 51, man. And these, and these deep underground Deep underground military bases and stuff like that that these niggas got going, got going on, man. You feel me? Yeah, we talking about Air 51. We, we really talking about, we really, this really is a lecture about Air 51. But I'm going to give y'all more details about the other deep underground military bases that they got around the world and shit like that. But the live was originally, the live is going to, Really be about Air 51, but Air 51 connects to the other underground military bases. Rolling up the gun, you feel me? Rolling up the good guns, you feel me? Good guns. If you, hey, I'm let y'all know if any of y'all smoke or whatever you want to do, go on, roll it up now. Or if you you drink a little bit, go on, do that too, fam. Cause we we understand over here, like to each his own. You feel me? Like there's no set chosen path to being spiritual or being conscious you feel me just be yourself you feel me so smoke roll up you, whatever all that you gonna do that i ain't one of them i ain't one of them that come on and be like oh man if you do this you do that you can't listen to me you be yourself because the truth the truth so be yourself oh god Say less, say less, fam. Anything, well, and y'all gone, cause y'all gonna need it. Y'all gonna need it now, cause I'm finna get y'all some information. So y'all, y'all minds need to be mellow, clear. Don't you feel me? Fuck what they taught y'all in school. Fuck all that shit they told y'all right now. You feel me? You finna, you finna talk about some shit. I just got done rolling up. You finna talk about some shit. You feel me? We got we got some people up in here. We we almost at ten minutes. Almost at ten minutes. We got some people up in here. We coming on here telling y'all telling y'all about Air Fifty One, man. What's going on with the Air Fifty One situation? Hold on one second.
All right. We in here. Hold on, one, one more. Got to make sure I get my laptop. I'm going to get my laptop and my other phone before I even start the next. All right, y'all, we in here. We talking about Area 51. I'm going to talk about Bob Lazar, S4. I'm going to talk about the Roswell incident. We're going to talk about all this in here. We're going to talk about all. We're going to connect all this in here today, fam. Going to talk about Bob Lazar, extraterrestrial, um, extraterrestrial crafts that we didn't reverse engineer. Air 51, we're going to talk about all this in here. Y'all stay tuned. Stay tuned. Okay, y'all like say, uh, or... She wants to be the man. Oh, Lord. Oh, y'all. Just getting everything situated. Getting everything situated around the house. All right. All right. We in here. Before I start this off, I'm going to say I appreciate everybody for coming on here. Peace to the ancestors. Peace to any higher, higher vibratory people that want to tune into the message. I tune into the message. I appreciate everybody for coming on here. And I want to say peace to the, I want to say thank, thank you to my ancestors and any spirit guides or any type of, you know, ultra, you know what I'm saying, type of being that I'm getting this information from, that, that, that I'm letting channel through me. I want to say appreciate y'all. I want to say appreciate everybody that came out to watch the lecture, and we, cause we been we been under we been enslaved for five hundred plus years. These niggas did a lot of fucked up shit to their planet. You feel me? And the truth got to come out one day. Real shit. All right, so boom, Area Fifty One. What is Area Fifty One? Air 51 is a military base. Hold on one second. One second. Air 51 is this clandestine military base, right? Well, it's basically the most known secret. It's basically the most basically the most known secret military base that the United States got, right? Or one of the most known. But see, Air 51. And I've been to about Air 51. Like, Air 51 was one of those things that it excited me when I was a kid. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was excited about stuff like Air 51 when I, like, I was into shit like this when I was younger. So, I, that's why I say, bro, I've been wanting to know, like, the truth. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember when the story, I remember when I first heard the story of Bar Lazar by the extraterrestrials and all that. And I was like, yeah, that shit was real back then because it sounded too real. You feel me? But I got the laptop and everything because I can just tell y'all what it is. You feel me? But I'm going to actually go on, on the internet and show y'all this shit because I can just tell y'all like, oh, Air 51 is their base where they do this and do that. And they got this and that going on underground and all this other shit. You feel me? 
I can just tell y'all, but we need we need a little bit more video. We need a little bit more video evidence than that nowadays. You feel me? So guess what we finna do? Sit y'all right here. Sit y'all right here and we finna look this up on the laptop about Air 51. So what's going on with Air 51? Air 51, bro, is really, it's one of their most important bases. But they they put the base on top of the land. Like, the base on top of Air 51 is, the, is a real base. But that's really to throw a lot of y'all off, bro. Like, the real Air 51 is underground, bro. It's under, it's miles beneath the surface, like and they will never even let people, like, they will never let regular people go there. Like, there's these airlines called Janet. They're called Janet. They call the Janet, the Janet Airlines. And the people that fly in to work at Air 51 that fly on those Janet, Janet Airlines, those, those are some of the people that work in the underground, in the deep underground military bases that's underneath Area 51. And these, some of these people don't even have social security numbers. Facts. Some of these people that fly on the Janet Airlines and shit, bro, they ain't got to go through security checks, none of that. These niggas just go straight to the thing and get on the plane, I swear to God. Like, like some of them don't even have social security number type, I, I swear to God. But let me go on Google. I'm finna go on Google and look up. Let's see what Google got to say. Let's see what Google got to say about Area 51. Appreciate it. Appreciate the likes, man. Y'all get them likes up. Get them likes up. Boost the algorithm. But let's see what let's see what Google got to say about Area 51. All right. Let's see what let's see what they say about Area 51. Area 51. All right. So it say right here. Area 51 is the common is the common name of a highly classified United States United States Air Force facility within the Nevada test within the Nevada test and training range. All right, so All right, so we're going to go to this right here. Area 51 is common is is the common name of a boom uh, I already read that. A range, a right, a remote detachment administered by Edwards Air Force Base. The facility is officially called Home, what did I say? Homie Airport, Homie Airport, or Groom Lake. All right, so Groom Lake, Groom Lake, yeah, Groom Lake. That's what I remember, Groom Lake. Groom Lake. All right, so this is some called Britannica. This say Air 51. This is about the, the history and all that of Air 51. So let's see what they talking about. It is administered by Edwards Air Force Base in Southern California. The installation has been the focus of numerous conspiracies involving extraterrestrial life, though its only confirmed use is a flight testing facility. Bullshit. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. You need to talk about it only, man. Please, bullshit, bullshit. Don't let y'all don't let these folk bullshit to y'all, man. For years, there was speculation about the installation, especially amid growing reports of UFO sightings in the vicinity. The site became known as Area Fifty One, which was a designation on maps of the Atomic Energy Commission. Conspiracy theories gained support. Oh, damn, that's a whole nother thing. Conspiracy theory gained support in the 1980s when a man alleged to have worked at the installation claimed the government was examining recovered alien spacecraft. All right, so you talking about Bob Lazar. Now we talking about Bob Lazar. Talking about Bob Lazar. Now, that, that was Bob Lazar that they talking about. I'm going to talk about him, too. In 2013, the U.S. government officially acknowledged the existence of Area 51. Hold on, let go. let go back. So they they just came out in 2013. They just came out in 2013 and said that it's a real base. That near the national 
National that year, the National Security Archive at the George Washington University obtained through the Freedom of Information Act, FOLA, a formally classified CIA document that chronicled the history of the U-2 spy plane, a heavily redacted version that had previously been released in 1998. All right, so boom. So that's when the shit came out, came became known, right? They came out about it in 2013 with the Freedom of Information Act, right? F-O-I-A, I mean, not F-O-L-A, it's F-O-I-A, not L-A. But think about this, fam. So that means that the shit that they telling us about currently in Area 51 is shit that they been had years ago. So they been came out and told y'all about something that they had going on years ago. So imagine what they doing right now that we ain't going to know. If these niggas had their way, that we ain't going to know for the next 50, 60 years. This was back in the night, bro. This was back in the 1900s when they were doing this shit right here. And they just came out in 2013 talking about this shit. Bro. So imagine what they doing now, bro. Imagine what they doing right now, bro. But, all right, so finna keep going. According to the report, the 1990, the 19, according to the report in 1955, the remote site which included an airfield not used by the military, <clears throat> not used by the military since World War II, was selected in order to test the U-2 test flights of that spy plane and subsequent aircraft, accounting for many of the UFO sightings in the area. The U-2 could reach altitudes much higher than any other planes at the time. So they said that the U-2 was the, some of the UFO sighting that people were, were seeing, right? Also, also, after the U-2 was put into service in 1956, Air 51 was used to develop other aircraft, including the A-12, also known as Oxcart, reconnaissance plane, and the stealth fighter F-17 Nighthawk. So all of us know about the F-17. Those are the planes they use in, um, whatchamacallit, in you know, Iraq. When we went to Iraq, those are the planes they use in Operation Desert Storm. You know, at nighttime, that famous video at nighttime where they bombing, you know what I'm saying? They bombing on folks and shit. All right, so... So they basically they ain't finna tell you nothing else about it, basically. So they so now they finna just keep lying to y'all and talking about all the other shit, right? Alright, so who was Bob Lazar? Bob Lazar was a man that worked at Area 51. And this is why I say the government is compartmentalized. The government is compartmentalized because certain people know certain stuff, but they don't know everything. You get what I'm saying? Like, there's people that work in the top, top reaches of the government that know more than the people that's right belief that's right below them in the, the pyramid scheme, the triangle, the triangular, you know what I'm saying? The triangular, you get what I'm saying? The people at the top, you know what I'm saying? And right now, there's people in there that don't know what the other part is doing. So the people at the bottom don't know shit about right here. The people right here don't know shit about right there. Like, real shit. So, Bob Lazar knew some stuff, but he didn't know everything. Bob Lazar knew some stuff, but he didn't really know everything. Nah, man, I don't. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> but Bob Lazar knew some stuff, but he don't know everything, right? What was going on was that Bob Lazar is a regular person, bro. Bob Lazar, a regular person. He not no. He not no clone. He not know none of that. He a regular person. So he was out here working. He was out here working and he felt this shit. He was like, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck y'all doing? And this type of shit, you feel me? Like, it shot them type shit. You feel me? But that was his job to work on stuff like this. His job was to work on stuff like this. But see, the thing is, bro, once you work around stuff like that, it challenges you mentally because this technology, it be so out of this world and stuff like that. You be like, man, the world got to know. 
You see what I'm saying? You be like, man, the world got to know, bro. The world got to know about this shit. So that's why Bob, Bob Lazar is a real person. You get what I'm saying? So he was he was on some shit like, bro, the world got to know this shit. The world got to know what's going on. What's going on, Mike King? What's going on? Can I say the M? <laughs> hey, y'all is crazy, bro. Like, bro, what? <laughs> the internet... <laughs> Internet crazy, but what's going on, Mike King? What's going on, Julian? And and on um, Freddie. What's going on, Freddie? All y'all in the chat. What's going on? But yeah, man, Bob Lazar, he was like, bro, the world gotta know. The world gotta know this shit. You feel me? That bluntly went out. But he was like, the world gotta know, bro. We can't be doing all this shit and don't nobody know. You know what I'm saying? But hold on, now I'm finna look up Bob Lazar. Bob Lazar. Now you finna look up Bob Lazar. Alright, now you finna go to Bob Lazar. Alright, so who was Bob Lazar? Robert Scott Lazar. Ro yeah, Robert Scott Lazar. Born January 26, 1959. An American conspiracy theorist who claims he was hired in the late 1980s to reverse engineer extraterrestrial technology. This work supposedly occurred at a secret site called S4 at a sub, as a sub, however, sub, I'm trying to think, I forgot how you say it, but basically it's like a sub, sub division, basically. Installation allegedly located several kilometers south of the United States Air Force facility, popularly known as Area 51. So, boom, Bob Lazar, they claim he a, he a conspiracy theory, right? But think about this right here, bro. How the fuck did man a lunatic conspiracy theorist when he works at the one of the highly most classified United States air bases in the fucking world? This man work at one of the top military bases in the world. How the fuck did man crazy? But that, that, now they want to act like he crazy because he came out and told the world about all this shit. But y'all hired this man to work on reverse engineer extraterrestrial technology. But now that he coming out telling the world about y'all bullshit, Y'all want to act like he crazy. Come on, man. Come on, man. See, there what? See, bro, I'm, I'm going to tell y'all this. Before I keep going, I'm going to tell y'all this. The government, bro, they get people to work on shit like this. And and they, they make them sign non-disclosure agreements and all this other shit. That's why when certain people cross that line, they got the authority to get rid of them. Real shit. He a smart. He knows what you talking about. They just mad. He sold them out. Facts, fam. Facts. 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 Because the, a lot of these niggas, bro, they be signing. They be getting themselves into some shit, but they don't fully know what it is. You get what I'm saying? Because the government, they ain't going to tell you everything, bro. They Like in that movie, The Three-Body Problem, that lady that was like in prison for the rest of her life, they sent her to that, that government facility, that military base, and they told her, you got to work here for the rest of your life. They have people like that, that they work they work at bases like that for real. They never leave. They stay there forever. They never leave type shit. They never leave. Fam, you got to go. Fam, you might have to run the live back, fam. But we on here talking about Air 51 and Bart Lazar. Real shit. They sold, sold them out all that, man. So the government of how these people... That'll be extremely intelligent and stuff like that. They just got to make sure you don't say nothing. That's why some of these people come out and all of a sudden they end up getting killed. Because it's like, you signed a non-disclosure agreement, fam. You, you signed a non-disclosure agreement. So anything that happens is it, uh, like, yeah, these folk got the right to get your family. All that. You feel me? They got the right to get your family. Facts, facts, facts. So like people like Bob Lazar, if, if people, if they was to get rid of Bob Lazar, everybody would know, yeah, these niggas, he, what well, he's saying real. So they, yeah, facts, facts. They can't just get rid of Bob Lazar like that. He too popular. He too popular. There is more than one Air 51. Facts, facts, fam. Facts, fam. There's more than one Air 51. On God, there is. But we gon' we gonna get into all that. Y'all just y'all just be patient with me, fam. We gonna get into all this, I promise. 
We gonna get into all this. We gonna get into all this. Y'all just be patient with me. And we gonna we gonna get into all this. But but why then? Why they right here? Lazar Lazar purports to have examined an alien craft and read government briefing documents that describe alien involvement in human affairs over the past 10,000 years. His claims brought additional public attention to Area 51 and fueled conspiracy theories surrounding its classified activities. His assertions have been analyzed and rejected by skeptics and some UFO ufologists. I think that's how you say it. Although he retains a, a following of supporters, Lazar has no evidence of alien life or technology, and elements of his claim, education, and employment history have been exaggerated or fabricated. Lazar has also engaged in criminal activity. He has been convicted in 1990 for his involvement in a prostitution ring, and again in 2006, seeing illegal chemicals, selling illegal chemicals. Journalist Ken Lane states, a lot of credible people have looked at Lazar's story and rationally concluded that he made it up. All right. So basically, they they trying to shit on bro, shit him, shit him down, and be like, ah, oh, boom, 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 boom. You feel me? All right. So so basically, they trying to shit on bro, shit on bro name and all that, right? I right, appreciate that, fam. Yeah, yeah, just so to the channel. And we got plenty of lies coming. Plenty of lies coming. All right, so now we finna look this up right here. Since they want to say, oh, man, like, he ain't, you know what I'm saying? All All right, for the show, let me show y'all this right here. Might have to mute it. Yeah, this on this on YouTube. They gonna try to mute this shit. Yeah, this on YouTube. They gonna try to mute it. This on YouTube, so they gonna try to mute it. All right, so I can't I can't show y'all the video, but y'all can look the video up. This is this right here. Bob Lazar described alien technology house air C S4 base and Y'all look that up right there. I can't show y'all the video because they might try to copyright my live. Alright, so boom. They claiming that Bob Lazar didn't work there and all that shit, right? But in actuality, Bob Lazar worked there. Because if he didn't work there, they wouldn't go so hard to try to make him seem crazy. You feel what I'm saying? If Bob Lazar didn't work at Area 51, if he made all this up. Y'all wouldn't go so hard to try to do all this stuff to him and make him seem crazy if he was just talking. Say left, fam. Say left. Say left, fam. Yeah, you know, stay tuned. We got many lies on the way. And oh, uh, Siri, Siri, this, I'm an arm. Um, Keep those coordinates right there in the chat. Keep those coordinates. I'm finna tap into that. But watch this right here. All right, so it say Lazar claims to be a physicist and to have worked in, in this capacity during his tent. However you say that, at the Los Alamo Mason. Hold on, there, this employment. At the Los Alamo Mason Physics Facility. This assertion. This assertion was echoed by a local journalist who inter who interviewed Lazar about his interest in jet powered cars in 1982. Some media outlets have since dubbed him a physicist. Inquiry, inquiry into Lazar's position at the facility, however, revealed his role to have been a technician for a contractor firm and that he worked neither as a physicist or for Los Alamos. A such laboratory has no records on Lazar, whom Protoro states was in short rather than a minor player. The Smithsonian and various mainstream news outlets have stated that his physical designation is self-proclaimed. 
Notice how they say the Smithsonian. You see how they, the Smithsonian. Why the fuck is the Smithsonian stepping involved? Protecting whatever this is. Real shit, bro. Why all of it? Why the fuck do this Smithsonian have to get involved? This is one man. This is one man. This is one man, bro, coming out here just, just talking. Why do y'all got to get the, the fucking Smithsonian's involved? The Smithsonian said the Smithsonian various mainstream news outlets. And y'all already know who the mainstream, the Smithsonian, don't, you can basically say them the same people. The Smithsonian and the mainstream news outlets. You can basically say them the same people. Why the hell these niggas got to get involved and it's just one man, bro? All right, so we're going to go to this right here. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Lazar has claimed, hold on, Lazar has claimed that the propulsion of the study vehicle ran on an antimatter. Hold on, hold on. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I didn't claim too far. Hold on, man. Let me just read all of this for y'all. I wish I had goddamn to read. Oh, read a loud selection. See, you can read this shit aloud. Since 1989, Lazar uh, yeah. has achieved public notoriety as an Area 51 conspiracy theorist. D. In May of that year, he appeared in an interview with investigative reporter George Knapp on Las Vegas TV station Kloss, under the pseudonym Dennis and with his face hidden, to discuss his purported employment at S. All right, stop. Oh, S4. All right, stop. Minus four. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. LF proclaimed C. Why Since 1989, Lazar has achieved public notoriety as an Area 51 conspiracy theorist. D. Why the hell? Oh, no. Let me just get up out of there. I didn't mess it up, y'all. I didn't mess it up, y'all. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get it right. I didn't mess it up. Hold on. Let me get that. What the fuck? Hold on. Hold on. Let me go back to it. Ah, I messed it up. Ah, here we go. Here we. Here we go. Here we go. All right. All right. My bad, y'all. My bad. All right. So, boom. Basically, a he claimed it. He claimed. Hold on. I'm gonna start it. I'm trying to see where a good position. Right here. A facility he claimed exists near the Nails Air Force Base installation known as Air 51. He claims that, what did he say? He claims that the, the said facility was adjacent to Papoose Lake, which is located south of the main Air 51 facility in Groom Lake. He claimed that the site consisted of concealed aircraft hangars built into a mountainside. Lazar said that his job was to help reverse engineering of one of the nine flying saucers, which he had led were extraterrestrial in origin. He claims one of the flying saucers, the one he coined the sport, the sport model, was manufactured out of a metallic substance similar in appearance and touch to liquid titanium. It is in a subsequent interview that November that oh, in a subsequent interview that November, Lazar appeared unmasked and under his own name, where he claimed that his job interview for work at the facility was with contractor EGNG, and that his employer was the United States Navy. EGNG stated it had no records on on him. His supposed employment at a Nellis Air Force Base, however you say that has also been discredited by skeptics as well as the United States Air Force. Fam, literally, bro, on every fucking step of the way, they saying he lying. Bro, this shit is literally like, bro, y'all know, y'all see this, bro? It's like, literally, bro, everybody saying he's lying. Everybody. How, how the fuck, like, bro, the Smithsonian say you lying. Military say you lying. Not the Air Force say you lying. The Air Force, nigga. Not the Air Force say he lying. Not EGNG say he lying. 
Why, bro? Ain't no way, I, bro. Ain't no way, bro. Y'all, y'all. I know y'all seeing this pattern, bro. Why is everybody claiming that he's lying or he's bullshitting? Why ain't nobody picking up for him? Nobody, nobody, nobody's picking up for him. And y'all may not believe this, bro, but on the old documentary that Ben came out, it even said that y'all they was lying and shit about on that shit about Bart Lazar, and he actually did work there. That's in a real document. That's in a real doc documentary. I can't put it on here because they might, you know, copyright my YouTube channel. Exactly, bro. Exactly. They claim this man lying so much. And then on top of that, Pete went, Pete this right here. Pete this right here. Of the nine, wait, how many flying saucers? Nine. Nine. Nine flying saucers. Fam. Fam. The government understands numerology and all this shit. A lot of the ships, some of these, some of the some of the ships, they fly off of crystals and antimatter and all this other shit. Dark matter and all this other shit. Some of the ships that fly in the sky, in the sky at nighttime above us with the little bit of lights that be flying around and shit, they fly off of crystals. Hold on right quick. They work through crystals. Hold on right quick. Stuff like this. Some of the ships get, some of the ships are powered through stuff like this. This is a crystal. You know what I'm saying? Some of the ships get popped, they um, flown through crystal. They got like, you know how we got like the, the jet engine and stuff like that and, and the ships we fly, right? The jet engine and stuff. Picture of the little flying saucer. And there's like a compartment in the back of it with a crystal. And the crystal is what pro propels it forward like real shit. It, I know it sounds insane, but. Tell me. But hold on, we finna keep going. That that's another reason why we even are so connected to crystals. Real shit, bro. Because we there, bro, there's real light, like, hey man. Hey man, y'all just wait to see. Y'all gonna see all this shit. Just wait to see. But there's real some of the ships get flown by crystals. Hold on. Lazar has claimed that the propulsion of the studied vehicle ran on an antimatter reactor and was fueled by the chemical element with atomic number 115, E1, E115, which at the time was provisionally named as, I don't know how have you, I don't know how have you said it. Hold on. We're going to see how you say this. Unintentium and had not. Unintentium, however you said it, and had not yet been artificially created. It was first synthesized in 2003 and later named Moscovium. He said that the propulsion system relied on a stable isotope of E115, which allegedly generates, which allegedly generates a gravity wave that allowed the vehicle to fly and evade visual detecting by bending light around it, nigga. Man, that's some man, you hear like the fucking technology? And then nigga, nigga, these some bitch that came out in 2003 and made the same element. So he was so he was telling the truth back in the day when it was real. But they claim he was lying back then. And then in 2003, they gonna come out and say, Oh my god, we made the element finally. Bro, y'all been had that shit, bro. Facts. They don't. Facts, fam. Facts, fam. Like, fam. They been had that shit. Lazar told them they had that shit. And they came out talking about Lazar line. Now they want to rename it so folk won't know that's the same thing Lazar was talking about. Facts. You can't make this shit up, bro. Now they want to rename it so folk can be like, oh, Lazar was lying. Nah, bro. Lazar been told them. It's like, bro. We Bro, I fuck with y'all, bro. We woke over here, bro. We ain't falling for that bullshit. I wouldn't even say woke. We just know the real, bro. We just know the real, bro. You feel me? I ain't, man, I ain't going for that shit. Oh, God. Going for that shit. But let's keep going. Let's keep going, y'all.
No stable isotope of, of Moscow, Moscovinium have yet been synthesized. All have proven extremely radioactive, decaying in a few hundred milliseconds. Lazar said the craft was dismantled and the reactor he studied was topped by a spear or semi-spear which emitted, a, which emitted a force field capable of repulsing human flesh. He explained that the craft was split into two main levels. God damn. Nigga, that's what the fuck? The reactor was positioned at the center of the upper level with an antenna extending to the top, surrounded by three gravity amplifiers. These connected to gravity emitters on the lower level, which can rotate 180 degrees to output a gravity beam or anti-gravity wave, and that crowd would then travel belly first into its distortion field. God damn. God, man, man, they had to say he was lying. Cause nigga, he going in detail. Nigga, he going in detail with this shit. That's how you know he worked there. Man, that man worked there, boy. He worked there. He know too much. He know too much. He worked there. Hell yeah, he worked there. Oh God, that man worked there. I could just go off and read what he say. He worked there. Yeah, yeah, he worked there. I don't blame the Smithsonian for saying, hey, hey, the Smithsonian probably called everybody like, hey, man, every fucking person that you that say he did this or work for them or he went to their school, tell them he lying. Oh, God. Like, they call EG and G. They call the Air Force. They call everybody and say, hey, nigga, tell them Lazar is lying. Oh, God. The Smithsonian, they like, hey, hey, but he know too much. We got to, hey, tell him he lying. He lying. <laughs> Oh God. But let's keep going. Let's keep going. Hold on right quick, y'all. Oh fam, we gonna talk about that too. We gonna talk about that too, about the Roswell incident. We gonna talk, man. I might have to do a part two to this fam. Or this live right here might be two hours long. See, I ain't gonna lie to you. Cause this shit right here, I know this. Hold on right quick, y'all. Hold on, what's that? That hit. Hit that gas for Candy Major right quick. All right. Lazar, Lazar has claimed that during his that during his joining the program, he read briefing documents describing the historical involvement. Hold on, y'all, cause this right here is where it gets good at. Cause my nigga. Hold on. This right here is where this shit gets good at. Because he finna tell y'all about some shit that I've been telling y'all about for a long time. For a long time. Lazar has claimed that during his program, he read briefing documents describing the historical involvement of Earth for the past 10,000 years with extraterrestrial beings described as gray aliens from a planet orbiting the twin binary system. The twin binary star system, Zeta Reticuli. As of September 2019, no extrasolar planets have been found in the Zeta Reticuli system. Additionally, the Zeta Reticuli system is too young with an average age of 1.53 billion years old. It took 500 million through 1 billion years for the first cell to evolve on Earth and an additional 3 billion for complex. Hold on, we put a pause it right fucking there. Cause how the fuck y'all know it took a million or billion years for this shit to get formed? How we know y'all ain't just throwing these dates out there? Cause nigga, nigga, how, let's just be real, bro. How the fuck we know these niggas is? How so, think about that, bro. Nigga, they don't even know what's at the bottom of the ocean. But they can tell you how long it took for another motherfucking planet to be formed? Bro, come on, bro. Bruh, come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Bro, uh, this is right here for if it's anybody out here that is a NASA fanatic and y'all care so much about what these, these big ass scientists say, how the fuck they don't know what's at the bottom of the ocean. But you can tell me how another motherfucking planet got formed in a whole nother solar system. But you don't even know what's at the bottom of the ocean. Bro, come on, bro. Come on, bro. 
Come on, bro. Bro. All right, so I'm finna tell y'all what's going on with that right there. I'm finna tell y'all what's going on. The Grays is a real race of extraterrestrials. I'm finna show you exactly how they motherfucking look. These are the Grays. These are the Grays that he's talking about right here. These are the Grays from, Zeta Retic from the Zeta Reticuli star system. And see, the reason why they say, oh, Zeta Reticuli ain't got no extra solo, ain't got no planets and all that, is because when you look up in the sky, all the stars are not stars. All the stars are not suns. Those are planets, other galaxies, other realities, other all types of shit, bro. Like they lying, they are lying to us, bro. Those are other planets up there, other other all types of shit going on up there. Though, like you can literally, like you can literally fly up into space, bro, and get close to some of these, get close to some of these, like. These stars are what we perceive as stars, and they're going to, like, start to phase open. You may think I'm crazy, but they're going to start to phase open. They're going to phase open into a whole different reality, bro, and you're going to end up in, like, another atmosphere. Like, you're going to end up in a whole other reality, like, atmosphere. You're gonna, it's going to seem like you're coming into a whole other Earth. Like, you're going to see, like, the cloud and shit that's going to open up. You're going to be like, what the fuck? Like, real shit, bro. Like, they lying to us about space, bro. So we finna go to the graves. Finna go to the graves. What are the graves? Finna go to the graves. All right. These are the graves from the Zeta Reticuli star system. These are the graves. Hold on. Finna go to the graves. These are the graves. The graves. These are the graves. These are how the graves look. The graves. I wouldn't say that's exactly them now, but you know. Yeah, right here. Gray aliens. Gray aliens. Hold on, fam. I'm finna go back to it now. I'm finna type it in now. Since I'm on since I'm already on the on the on thing. Hold on, finna type it in now. Finna type the coordinates. Cool. Thirty-two degrees. Oh, you talking about this, fam? Oh, you talking about this? Oh, bro, I remember this shit, bro. This shit that looked like a goddamn, yeah, look like it's blocking something. It's like a black blob. Like, it's something right here that's black and it's blocking it out. You talking about this right here? Fam, I remember when I saw this shit, I didn't really know. I ain't gonna lie, fam. I don't know what the fuck this is. Something in the Mojave, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tanks all around it, yeah. I remember that shit. What y'all think that is, fam? Cause I ain't gonna lie, I don't know what that is, bro. I gotta do some research on that, but they probably hiding a portal or something like that. You feel me? Like it's probably a portal or some type of. It's something going on right now. You feel me? So, but about the grades and shit, right? All right. So this is why they say that there's no. Planets around the Zeta Reticuli star system and it's too young and all that other shit. The Zeta Reticuli star system is not that old. It's it's kind of a newer. It's it's old. It's ancient now. It's all of this shit is old as fuck. But it's not as old as a lot of the other ones. You get what I'm saying? The Zeta the Zeta Grays they're kind of like the Zeta Grays are trying to like. They kind of like falling in frequency, if you get what I'm saying. The Zeta Grays are a race that kind of fall have fallen in frequency. That's why they look like so, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, that's like their suit. You get what I'm saying? But they they still look kind of like decrepit and shit like that. You feel me? They kind of falling in frequency as a race. So what they doing is the light codes and stuff like that is inside of humans and shit like that. Well, I wouldn't say the, the light codes, but... They kidnap, the grays don't kidnap. If you got this skin color, 
I'm not saying it like that, but if you got this skin color, the grays don't really mess with you like that. Because the greedy, there's a treaty called the Greedy Treaty, the Greedy Agreement, or whatever you want to call it, that was signed back in the 1900s, where the government is allowing the grays and the insectoids and two to three other different alien alien races to real life kidnap, kidnap their own civilians. But we not in the treaty because we are like food. If you got this skin color, they need us because we like the food and shit like that to the um the Draco reptilians. So it, it's scary to say that, but I'm just being real. Like they don't really just snatch us up like that. That's why you don't really hear a lot of us saying, "Hey man, you saw that UFO?" Or that's why you don't hear a lot of stories about people with this skin color getting abducted like that. It mostly be other races because they don't mess with us like that. Because we, they look at us like, leave them alone. We need their energy. You get what I'm saying? Like, we we different. You feel me? But I'm not saying it like that, but I'm being real, bro. Not yeah, I'm just being real, bro. You feel me? I'm not breaking it to that, but it's, it's shit real, bro. Like, because we 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 got carbon and all that other shit, bro. So it's like, with us, it's different. You feel me? Like, with us, it's just different. We may get kidnapped by them ever so often, but it's not like that. The Greedy Agreement, they signed a Greedy Treaty, treaty to let the Greys and all these other races kidnap people in exchange for technology. Real shit. That's why in the 1900s, the technology went through the roof, along with the crash of Roswell, along with the crash of Roswell, but also they signed a greedy agreement with extraterrestrials. And now they're able to kidnap people in exchange for technology. Facts. The, but see, this is the thing. The, high, the higher up, the higher up, Humans, the higher up human beings, they like, they kind of sold everybody else out that's beneath them because they're the ones that signed the greedy treaty. You feel what I'm saying? They signed the greedy treaty, but in a shame, now all the, the, the regular civilians can't get kidnapped now. The regular civilians, they're the ones that can't get kidnapped by these, these extraterrestrials, but they're the ones that still sitting at the top sitting on the throne. They not in touch. They still not getting touch. You feel me? And we getting all this technology and all this other shit in return. Facts. And the same technology is what's keeping us asleep. Because before we had cell phone towers, bro, we had these giant, we had giant crystal pier, crystal towers look just like these, but giant. And they work like cell phone towers. You can send a message from your pineal gland to the crystal tower. That crystal tower will relay that message to another crystal tower, and that and from that crystal tower, it will go to that person's pineal gland. All this shit, all, the whole bro, the matrix model, model can all this shit, bro, all this shit real. The matrix model that uh, bro, but the, the so with the um, why they say there's no extra, there's no planets or whatever around these suns, right? It's because planets. Planets, they lie to y'all and make y'all think everything up there is a sun. But really, those are planets and stuff like that. So, the Zeta Reticuli star system, those are actually a, a group of planets. That ain't really a sun. Those are planets. Real shit. Then that's why they say, oh, there's no planets that can harbor life out there. Because they're lying about how the stars look. Matter of fact, bro, I did another live about the Nomo. And in that live, they said the same thing. Oh, the two suns too close to each other, so ain't no way life could be out there. They said the same thing about where the Nomos come from. So, bro, the planet, they lying, bro. And sometimes they get caught up in their lies. Real shit. And they sometimes they just get caught up in their lies. Facts. So, boom. It took 500 million through 1 billion years for the first cell to evolve on Earth, and an additional billion years for complex multicellular life to evolve on Earth after the Cambrian explosion. In 1989, Lazar said the seats of the saucer he saw were approximately the child size and that he had seen alien heavy, alien heavy set of corresponding size. So basically, people that ride in it, I guess. He said that while walking down a hallway at S4, he briefly glanced through a door 
through a, through a door window and saw what he interpreted as two men in a lab. A lab coach facing down and talking to something small with long arms. Three decades later, he said he did not think he saw an alien, but speculated that he saw a doll used as a reference for the size of the alleged aliens and that a nickname used for them was the kids. Damn. In 2007, Lazar's workplace was raided by the FBI and local police, which Lazar theorizes was, was to recover Element 115, a substance he says he took from a government lab. Records obtained through a Freedom of Information request show the raid was part of a murder investigation to determine whether his company sold thallium to a murder suspect in Michigan. Lazar was not listed as a suspect in the investigation. Damn, they lying, bro. They lie on every fucking level, bro. These niggas literally, they lying about coming to the nigga house. My God. All right, so boom. Now we done talked about the Bob Lazar story, right? Now we finna, we ain't done yet though, y'all. We not done yet, y'all. We still got some more to go. We still got some more to go. We still is not done. Now we finna talk about the deep underground military bases part. Now I'm finna go to my YouTube video. I'm finna go to my own YouTube video. There's a dude named Phil Snyder. Phil Snyder. He he was a person that was, he was in charge of making deep underground military bases. He made, he made some of them underneath Area 51 or help in the construction. So boom, we finna talk about it. I might have to do a separate live. I'm going to do a separate live about the deep underground military base because we've been on here like an hour already. So, with, with Air 51, there is nine. There's nine of them. There's nine deep underground military bases underneath Air 51. That's why I say these beings, they understand astrology and numerology and the power of numbers. Because if they did it, they wouldn't be able to do the stuff they do. Some of the technology and stuff like that, it wouldn't work without them using certain numbers. So that's why they got nine military bases underneath Area 51. There's nine of them. And each level knows different stuff. Each level doesn't know everything. So we've been talking about it. About the alien question. All right, then my video right here. Watch this. Now, y'all pay attention. Pay attention to this right here. The military's known about the alien question for the better part of 70 years. But right now, there are 131 active deep underground military bases in the United States. There's four. Go back. How many did he just say, nigga? And y'all wondering where all these. Y'all. And people wondering where all these missing people going. Bro, come on, bro. Hold on. How many did he just say it is? How many did he just say it is? For the better part of 70 years. Right now, there are 131 active deep underground military bases in the United States. Nigga, it was 130. Bob. Not Bob Lazar, Phil Snyder. Y'all look up Phil Snyder. Phil Snyder was a dude that the government killed a long time ago because he came out talking about shit like this. But he wasn't as known as Bob Lazar. So they could kill him and a lot of people wouldn't know. But if they killed Bob Lazar, everybody will know. So boom, Phil Snyder, he came out and talk, talking about this shit. He said that there are 131 in the United States alone. In the United States alone, it's 131. My nigga, just that alone throws everything off about history. Just that alone. That right there throws everything off about history. Because, my nigga, that literally means that underneath the whole United States, there's been aliens living. There's been real extraterrestrials. Living underneath the ground in the United States doing all this fucked up shit for years and we never fucking knew about it. 
And now we come and now they coming out with Project Blue Bean and all this other bullshit, making us think the aliens finna come and invade us from the sky when the whole time they been invaded us. They been invaded us. They been here the whole time, nigga. Man, these motherfuckers small as hell. But well, let's keep going. There's 1,477 of them worldwide. It'd take a year or two years to build each one. And now they're capable of building a couple of them a year uh, with sophisticated methods. My colleague, uh, Al Bielik, has actually been on some of the high-speed railway. See this right here? Remember when I was telling y'all in Godzilla when they showed y'all them trains? He finna talk about those trains right now. Let my nigga Cable cook. Let my nigga Cable cook, man. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What he just said? What he in Godzilla? They talked about these trains in Godzilla. Is uh, magneto leviton trains that connect all the deep underground military bases within the United States. He's been on a Mach two train and floats off of. Off of a single rail at a, uh, three quarters of All right, so you saw how he said he's been on the Mach 2, right? He said he's been on the Mach 2. So that's this is how they do this shit. The Grays, with, with, before the Greedy Treaty, this before the Greedy Treaty, because the deep underground military bases is part of the, the human being shit, but that's mostly the graves and the insectoid shit. Human beings really can't do shit about that, but we help them build them, though. You feel what I'm saying? We help them build them, but we don't really run that type of... We don't run that ball game. Even the high, the higher old human beings, they don't really have that much say-so in that ball game. That's the, that's the graves shit and the insectoid and the reptilian shit. That's they shit. You feel me? That, they ain't... Of course, there's some of the human beings that work down there and live down there and live good and all that, but they don't they don't run that ball game. That's they shit. I'm letting y'all know who really run the world for real, for real. In the shadows, beneath our feet, the whole fucking time. So, what going on in these bases is with the mock with the mock shit, right? He said he been on the mock two train. They got mock two, mock three. Mark 4, Mark 5, it goes all the way up. LeBron James, that's why people say LeBron James is a robot because LeBron James is like a Mark 5 or Mark 6 or even higher. He's like a Mark. They're almost, they identical to us, bro. That's why I tell y'all there's clones everywhere, bro. These are Mark, they synthetic robots. They look just like regular people, but they robots, bro. And you can't tell them no different. You cut them open, you see the guts and everything, bro. They don't have, you cut them open, nigga, they look just like regular people, but they robots. That's why when you tell certain people shit, it's like these niggas just snap. It's like, it's like they start glitching because they literal robots. They program and they, it start glitching out because the truth is biomechanical technology, but the truth is still cut clean through that. It cut clean through the program. So once the uh, once he hears it, it's like it's it, it, you know what I'm saying. Like somebody come up to the bro and be like, "Hey, bro, is you a robot?" Hey, really tell me is you a robot? Hey, nigga, let me know is you a robot? He'll start like he'll probably psych the fuck out. Real shit, bro, because the technology it started glitching out. But let keep let keep going. So the mock the trains and all that the trains the technology all that shit goes up and by mocks that's what they call it Mark one Mark two Mark three inch off the rail and we have nothing like this on the surface Grim Lake is where the infamous area 51 is here we go here we go we finna talk about it s4 and even Bob Lazar all this shit coming together now 4s2 uh it was later become the most secret base in the United States we built out uh, nine underground military bases there each nine you see what he just said they built nine underground military bases underneath Air 51. And what did Bob Lazar said about the flying saucers? How many they had? Nine. Nine. Nigga. Nigga. What do galaxies spiral in? A nine. What do your, your fingerprint spiral in? A nine. The top of your hair. A nine. Nine. How many, how many, how many months does a baby stay in the stomach? Nine. 
Nine is the number of completion. We nine eat the beans. That's why these, bro, they know this shit. That's why they have to use numerology and nines and all this shit. And I remember in the older video, I said. Hold on. That, 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 Hold on. We finna, we finna skip, buddy. Head time shit. It's shit on the air 51, bro. With an average uh, capacity capable of uh, basically a city underground, a roughly city. A city. A city. You hear what he you did y'all hear what he just said? That's when I tell y'all, bro, there's cities on the ground, bro. Like, bro, there's an Atlanta underneath Atlanta, bro. Literally. Literally. Capable of uh, basically a city underground, roughly four and a quarter cubic miles hollowed out underground. Now, boring machines, for instance, they don't bore. They literally vitrify and melt the rock, deflagrate the rock. It's a very sophisticated laser melting and deflagrating system. It reduces the rock to a powder and then melts the, the remaining rock as a coating on the inside of the base so you don't have to use gunite, cements, and other kinds of things like that. That's all the all old hat now. Phil Schneider gave most of his lectures in 1995. He gained a following speaking around the United States, telling people about his alleged experiences. Phil claimed that he personally knew people who also worked in black budget programs who were murdered, and that most of them were made to look like a suicide. All right, so boom, they they on um, they threaten they threaten them the same way they threaten everybody else, and they kill him too. This was back in 1995, bro. Bro, this was back before the internet and all this shit was even out like that. So, bro, why would he lie? He doesn't have no reason to lie about this to get a following. Bro, what's going on is that, bro, when people work at places like this and they do stuff like this, you see shit that changes your mind for the rest of your life. And you be like, nigga, somebody got to know. Somebody got to know. That's why that's why these rappers and these musicians they come out and be like, hey man, the music being they do all this fucked up shit, man. Because somebody you be like, bro, I just seen you be like, bro, I just seen a 20, 30 foot tall lizard grab somebody and eat them. Nigga, somebody gotta know. Somebody gotta know. You feel me? Like you nigga be like, bro, somebody gotta know. I gotta tell people. And people on beat be on some shit like they try to tell the world. And they come and get them. Because you can't tell, they, the world ain't ready to know stuff like that, bro. But they gonna know regardless because it ain't nothing nobody can do about it. Thanks. But, yeah, 70 minute though, man. I just gave y'all a live about Air 51, Bob Lazar, Phil Snyder, the deep underground military bases underneath Air 51. There's nine military bases underneath Air 51. And the base on the top was really a cover. That's like a cover story just for the real base underneath the surface. Real shit. There's nine military bases underneath Air 51. And S4 and all this shit that been going on, all this shit is real, bro. Bob Lazar's story real. Phil Snyder's story real. All this shit real. I'm going to probably keep the live going by five more minutes. Any other thing y'all want to know, but other than that, we pretty much good. I didn't did gave my drops. I didn't did my thing. Everybody good. Other than that, we pretty much good. But yeah, man, the true, the true, man. This all shit, man. It's true, the true, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Let me say it one more time. Run the live back. Nine military bases underneath Air 51. And the people that work in these military bases, some of them don't even go up to the surface. Some of them don't even know what the surface look like. They work down there their whole life because they can never, they can't show the world what they do down there. You feel me? They can't show the world what they do down there. The world cannot know what they do underneath Air 51. On the movie, The Tomorrow War, it says they thawed out. Real shit, bro. Real shit, bro.
And then, bro, there's actually a fucking crash spaceship in Greenland right now that's literally melting out of the ice. Literally. I do a lot, a lot of lips on that, too. Y'all know me, bro. I do a lot of lips on anything, bro. Because the truth, the truth, bro. I ain't just coming on here talking about this shit for no reason, bro. You feel me? Shit real, bro. Cold weather is manipulation. It's not real. All this shit, bro. I'll come on here and do a live about all this shit. I'll do a live titled Cold Weather and, and Weather Manipulation. I'm going to do a live called Cold Weather and, and Weather Manipulation. And I'm going to show y'all once and for all that cold weather is not fucking real. Facts. But that's all beside the point, man. Air 51... I'm going to say it one more time. Nine military bases under Air 51. And they doing some of the most horrific shit ever underneath them. What they doing under that, underneath that, bro, is anybody could. Why this guess, bro? You feel me? Think of anything from cloning, reverse engineering, shit, anything, bro. Cloning, reverse engineering, genetic manipulation. Anything you can think about, they doing all the underground in Area 51. That's really why all the weird stories come from, from the deep underground military bases part. On top, that really ain't nothing. You feel me? On top, that just be the basic shit, like where they put a little bit of the crafts and stuff like that. You feel me? But, you know, underground, underground where the real shit is. Underground is where the real shit is. That's where all the weird stories and all that shit coming from. On the ground. Facts. But that being said, bro, I appreciate everybody that tuned into the live. I really appreciate everybody that tuned into the live. That being said, peace to everybody that tuned in. I got many more live lectures on the way, and we out.